guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking in on the DIY bin and the topic that we're going to deal with today is three things that can make you more successful in being a worm farmer um, where you may have had problems before. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at those three things and then we're going to kind of unpack them. Number one is being impatient. Number two is making it way too complicated and number three is loving your worms three loving your worms too much so as we're going through and doing the maintenance on my DIY bin we will go ahead and talk about those topics so it's been about three weeks since we've looked in on this and so we're just gonna kinda look around and see what we've done I think we fed on the second layer down and we're just going to kind of look at this. It was refreshed. Uh, I'll put how long ago it was refreshed in the, the window there. So you can tell this is actually really new. This has got a lot of cardboard to it and also has a lot of the coconut core in there. So this is nowhere near, you know, migrating or anything like that. But we're going to start with topic number one, which is being impatient. So when you first start being a worm farmer, you start a new bin. The expectations that people have that the the new bin, or when you're a new farmer, just new in general, is that basically um, your worms are going to work as fast as anybody else's. And that's just not true. When you first have a worm bin and you just start it and you make your bedding and you put your worms in there and you hear all of the stories that one pound of worms or half a kilo will eat that much in food every day or every week or whatever the story is that is totally not true I've been doing this for you know quite a few years now and I just don't find that to be true in my situation maybe there's some situation out there where it is true but it is not here so basically if you're going to expect those worms to eat uh, their body weight every day then you are going to end up with a big mess and probably dead worms and a lot of stinkiness so we don't, you know, do not accept that. Do not, do not be impatient and try and rush your worms into eating too much food. You need to always evaluate what the worms are doing and then let them be your guide. If there's no food left, then you feed them more. If there's a lot of food left, don't feed them. And also, you know, if they uh, appear to be, as far as moisture goes, just don't assume that they need to be sopping wet because they breathe through their skin, so they need air as well. So if everything is sopping wet, you know, then the worms might also not be happy. So don't get impatient and just think that uh, you follow all of the little things you hear on Facebook. All right, so let's look at the next layer down. I will admit when I first started making worm bins and having worm farm, I will admit that I was impatient and I really thought that I was going to, you know, save the world from, you know, all of the the garbage and my worms were going to take care of it all and the reality versus my expectations were not aligned uh, as it turns out you know when your worm farm is new you know you get impatient to put all of this food in here and then as it turns out you really need an ecosystem in your worm bins in order to take care of that much food and so when you don't have the springtails and the mites and the roly-polies and everything else as far as bacteria and fungus in your worm bin then it's not going to operate as quickly so you do have to wait about almost six months for the biology to catch up with your expectations I think we did feed on this side over here actually don't remember what it was I think it was soup stuff so I did say that the uh, the slow food was going to be the the potato peels and I think I can smell onion in here but I don't I don't see it. Oh, there it is. There's the tomato or the uh, onion end. And I'll try and hold it still, but there are uh, springtails in there. I don't know if I see anything else other than worms and springtails. I don't see any mice, but if I hold still long enough, maybe I can do a time lapse and we'll be able to see it. Okay. So then looking at the other food, or looking for the other food rather, then, yep, I'm just seeing that potato so far, that's all I'm seeing. So they've, they've eaten everything else. I'll have to put a picture up there of what all we did feed them, but the only evidence I'm seeing is that onion and the potato, which is trying to grow. Wrong time of the year, dude. Okay, so 
The second point that I wanted to get to is that new worm farmers make it overly complicated. I know I did. So when I made this bin, you know, I assumed it had to have three layers and it had to have a lid and screen and and that I couldn't feed, you know, onions and tomatoes because it would, you know, hurt the worms. Uh, and what it turns out to is there's a lot of urban legends, um, as Patrick would say. And basically, you know, they're not people. They're not dogs. They don't have the same, you know, wants and likes and, and skin that we do. So, you know, I had all these things that I was like not feeding the worms and had to go drag outside. But as it turns out, you can feed worms, onion and green pepper and tomatoes. You know, you just have to, like any other food, you have to watch how much you feed them versus how many worms you have. And the only way you know how often to feed is to look and see. Is the food gone? Nope. Don't feed. All right, bottom level. Okay, so here we are at the bottom level, and it uh, looks like it's doing great. Look at that. Good worms. Love that. Last time it was kind of dry, and uh, didn't look like it was meat, you know, making too much progress down here. But they have really done a, a good job once I added that water. You know, and that's another point is that uh, you know just paying attention to what's going on in your worm bin is is worth everything. Um, because number, you know, number three is on your, you know, to-do list here is to not aggravate your worms too much. So you can love your worms to death. And one of the ways that you can do that is by looking in on them twice a day, feeding them too much food. Um, some worms are very fussy and they do not like to have people peeking at them all the time. And that is one of the problems that you can have, is that if you're in that bin, you know, twice a day, once a day, you can spook them, and, and certain types of worms will try to crawl the wall and escape if you pester them too much. And also, by loving them too much, you can give them too much food. I'm going to give them a little bedding down here, because it looks like they're, they are in need. So, that's rule one. Evaluate, and then act. So I'm just going to give them a little sprinkle of new bedding down here, just to give them something to work on. I'm not really sure if the worms come from this bottom level up. All right, let's put the second row back up. Okay, so this is our, our second level, and we fed a little bit, and it does have a little bit left. So I'm just going to switch sides over here, and I'm going to give them a little bit more of kind of the same food. Basically stuff I made soup with, some avocados, I think this is a tomato? Yeah, it's all wrinkly. So just some slow food there and one little piece of fast food. And that should keep this layer going good for quite some time. I'm going to give them a little bit of extra bedding on this side just to keep it level. Okay. That just kind of keeps it from uh, kiltering. All right, we're back on the top layer here, and uh, since we fed over here on that second layer, I think I'm going to do the feeding over on this side just so that the drippings can go down evenly and the, um, the good stuff can get picked up by the worms in the bottom. And I'm going to give them a really big mix of slow and fast food here so that they will have enough for the next three weeks. These are apples not frozen. Some of them are frozen, so they're going to last probably a month, maybe even two. Let's grab that sticker. So even though this looks like a lot of food, this is a lot of slow food. They might be able to nibble most of this banana away, but uh, for the most part, this is going to be in here the next time we visit the worms. So I hope that all of these tips were helpful to you to learn how to, you know, not love your worms to death, and also don't don't restrict yourself to so many rules and make everything so complicated. And then hopefully that'll give you also a little bit of an idea that you do need to be patient and don't pester your worms too often and expect them to be eating their weight in food every single day or week. If you like this bin, the DIY bin, I have a playlist that is right over there. Also, if you don't want to watch that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.